Welcome to Comfort Havoc number two. Instagram's still with me. They've been with me for about five videos. So they have the whole shebang. And this is my final video for tonight. So I need to go get a shower to prevent superhero stink. Drink this shit slow, people. Slower than me. Brain freeze. Shouldn't be that cold though. They run in the freezer that damn long. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh man. Okay. So I'm gonna give you guys um, an extra. This is not the special. This will basically be a weapons tutorial. So it gives me time to cool off and break it down. Because a lot of stuff you just saw me do in the last two videos, I highly recommend that you don't do. Mm -hmm. Especially drinking liquid fast. I should have known better. I know what happens in the army when you do that. Okay, leaving the mask off, keeping the suit on. At least for 10 minutes. So chobos, or short sticks, are from Kempo. Now, as far as I know, I was doing Korean Kempo, not Chinese Kempo or Japanese Kempo. Yes, both China and Japan have a Kempo. Go ahead and Google it, but they do. China also has Nijitsu because that's where it started, like Japan. But, uh, Japan has Naharate, which is their version of Taekwondo, which was like the last lessons that I took from Master Ennis before I had to leave his class due to financial disabilities on my end. So he didn't teach me Kimbo. Just Naharate and Taekwondo. Never got past white belt, but I'm good. So no worries there. Your chobos, I've given you this before. This is a recap, rehashing. Your short sticks, so you have your blocks. Boom, boom, you're gonna protect your central lane. So foom, 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 try not to rack your own knuckles like I just did. So you know, high left, strike, high right, strike. The same thing that you do with the chobos, you're gonna see me do with the commas in a few seconds. So low left, low right, medium left, medium right. Now Medium with knee, careful not to strike your knee. Medium with knee, <coughs> excuse me, again, careful not to strike your knee. And nine times out of 10, chobos are for close quarters combat. They're not for long range, all right? So you kinda gotta get in, boom, boom. Yeah, you know, boom, boom, boom. So when you see me do this, or this, or this, or this, that's just playing. You will never do this, or this, in a fight. Maybe at the beginning. Maybe in a movie scene. Huh. I'm going to do Raphael real quick. Hmm. I do hope there's more there. Yeah. Oh, my favorite. Hmm. You guys must have studied the bridge book of Ninja Fighting. I mean, come on. How you guys expect to beat my? Good answer. Good answer. Okay, enough playing. So you're never gonna do this with either hand, and you're gonna need to know your central blocks. You're also gonna need to know your X for the center, excuse me, X high, X center, X low. These are to protect you from swings this way or swings this way and thrust. So this push up, push down for that thrust. This is to block an upward motion towards your crotch so you can block it. It also makes you Easy to access coming straight up to block anything else coming at you. <coughs> now everybody will teach you something different than what I'm going to teach you. You get to choose who's correct and who's not because you're going to find out if you ever have to use these damn things, what works for you. Honestly, choose a guide. I will be the first one to tell you, this is what works for me. Because 
if I drop those or if I lose those, <clears throat> it's guaranteed that I'm probably going to get my ass kicked or killed. So the reason why I tell people the only weapons you ever need in a fight are the ones that God gave you. Your hands, your forearms, your elbows, your knees and your feet and even your thighs on occasion can be used as a weapon. Your body is the weapon. The weapons themselves are just tools. You have to learn how to use the tools in the proper fashion to make them work. All right, so we're gonna go into commas, and then we're gonna turn the commas into tampas. All right, so again, everything you just saw me do with the chobos, same fucking concept. Literally, same concept. None of this, because a real comma has a blade, it will cut your fucking hand. And then that could happen. No, you see me drop the damn thing. No, you see me do this earlier? For up slicing, you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna do this or that. You're not gonna have the chance in a real fight. It's just not gonna happen. Now, if you're quick enough, yeah, knock yourself out. No, not even if you're quick enough. Don't attempt that shit. So let's go over the blocks. You have your X block. This block specifically is for catching swords and locking them, and if your steel is better than the sword, pop, you've broken it and you slice. Pop. You've broken it and you slice. Pop, when you break it, you slice with the closest blade, and then you come back. Now you block and you gouge, you block and you gouge. Notice I use the word gouge instead of strike because this has blades on it. You're not striking with the blade, you are gouging because it's a hook blade, not a regular straight sword where you would slice. All right, now terminologies are different per teacher. I prefer to use the word gouge because it sounds so much cooler. I mean, you can eviscerate someone, but, you know, who has time to spell that shit in the, in the credits? Evisceration effects done by James. Uh, I can't even spell eviscerate, so it's not really an option. Now your blocks. High right with medium strike. Middle right with low strike, or just double middle. Got that? Low block with gouge and strike. Understand, it's kind of the same thing. You're blocking here and you're gouging here, which is still a strike, because you're like, boom. It also depends on the weapon and where they are coming, but if they're coming low, boom. Now, if you block with the one down here, you want to get this by, whip it around. You don't want to get this by and do that. That's not gonna happen. So, boom, flick the wrist. Understand how that works? Now, high left with the gouge, medium left with the gouge, low left with the gouge. Now, carefully, high right gouge, medium right with knee and gouge, high left, medium left with the knee and the gouge, and then low, low. Now the thing about commas you have to understand is you are not just holding sticks, you are holding mini sickles. If you know what a Russian sickle looks like, just imagine this about four times smaller. All right, where a Russian sickle you has this super long stick and a thing in the middle. So you look like this when you're swinging it, where a comma is two little sickles. And if you're Native American, they're like tomahawks. You won't be doing that in a fight either. This rolling of the wrist, useless. So you're not going to be doing it. You're in a movie. You're loosening up your wrists. That's basically what that shit is. You're doing this, it's only in the movies. In real life, if you're gonna fight like this with your freaking commas, you're gonna be making upward motions. You want to try not to cut and kick at the same time. This could happen and you could impale yourself, so you don't wanna do that. So if you're gonna use your body plus weapon, you wanna probably use your body first, unless a weapon is being swung at you where you block, punch, as you punch, you have struck, and then you can place your foot in the perfect position to attack your enemy. But by then, you're basically pushing the enemy off your blade. Nine times out of ten, if you're comma fighting like this, you were put in a bad situation to begin with. All right? And this is just the way you found them in your hand. Most of the time when you were commas, they should always be, under no circumstances whatsoever, in this position. Any martial artist here who wants to go against that, that's fine. I'm okay with your opinion. But the truth is the truth. Uh... This versus this, boom, this looks cool. Yeah, it looks cool as shit, but 
the difference between looking cool and actually surviving a fight is a matter of principle. So do you want to survive a fight or do you want to look cool? So if you're in a movie, like when I was doing my series, I had a double comma like this. It was a toy. It actually looked better than these things. But that's because I have been practicing with commas for a while and I wanted to incorporate them in the movies because they haven't been in the movies in forever. So when of the House of Wind had commas, they were like this. So as you can see, they make a Z. <laughs> and it was like this. Sadly, someone in Alabama has my movie. My whole fucking saga from 10 years ago. Imagine where I would be if that shit was up on YouTube now. Awesome. Anyway, whoever you are in Alabama, please send this shit back to 512 Rougemont. Yes, that's my actual address. Okay, Charlottesville, Virginia, 22902. Now it's there. Alright? I'm not worried about anybody coming to hurt me. <laughs> anyway, if you haven't seen my videos, coming to hurt me probably isn't the best idea you've had. I have swords. <laughs> anyway, so when you're going to fight with commas, you have to understand that these are blades. Now these are practice commas, so they're solid wood, so no one's going to get hurt. But with the real things, you don't want your hands anywhere near these. You don't want that. Because this part of the blade is the blunt side. This part of the blade, the instep, is the most dangerous part of the blade because it's the sharp side. Now the flat side, yeah, you're not going to hurt yourself too badly with them. But if you do one of these numbers and whoop, you just fucked yourself up. Because you just stabbed yourself in both of your thighs. And more than likely, if you try to pull up, you're going to hit your arteries. And then you're going to bleed the fuck out. Which is a very stupid move. So, when you are blocking, you kind of want to stay at the waist level. <laughs> now, if somebody's coming at you with a low kick, boom! You know, most low kicks go from your calf to your knee. Unless they're doing gung fu, where it's probably going to go like at the tip of your foot and your shin. So... You gotta have to realize what style you're going up against first and foremost. And again, the best weapon is not these. It's these bitches right here. Those things are tools. Now I'm gonna pick those back up and I'm gonna use them as tapas as I come to an end of this video. So that I can go post them and go jump my ass in the shower. <laughs> so, as tapas now, these are still commas, but we're pretending that they're tapas. Tapas, you have a little bit more room on the tip at least an inch more than this. So, your concept of tampas are block, strike. Now, if you're blocking this way, you can block here, see how it came out, or you can block there, and it gives you a little bit of leeway, but most of the time you want to keep that shit perfectly centered with your center of your forearm. Alright? So when you throw a block, you can step in and then strike out, or you can step in and do a full on push charge or you can just be jab and then strike jab and then strike now you're gonna have to find which one's more comfortable for you for me I'm gonna be honest I prefer out to in that's out to in this is in to out now if you've seen that graze me see it grazed me so for all safety purposes I suggest out to in so when you're striking this way you know, you have to get your arm out far enough so that it doesn't hit your body. But when you're out already and you're coming in, it's a safer bet that you're not going to hurt yourself. Just don't miss your opponent. And if you're throwing jabs, boom, in this way, versus jabs in this way, you're going to figure out which feels more natural, and you're going to go with what feels more natural. I'm sorry. Not everybody's James Williams Jr., and they're not always going to go outside like you're rowing a boat. I prefer the outside row your boat motion. Versus the inside. The other things about being on the inside when you throw one of these, you might forget and come back up this way and catch yourself in the face, which is never going to be good for you because you're going to knock yourself out. So, you know, your blocks, again, high, medium, low, high, medium, low. You don't necessarily have to use your knees as much with tampas as you will with like commas and the chobos. Now, with commas and chobos, you can use your knee. Again, not necessary, but you can, and you've seen me do that, so you know. But also with top push, you can use your knee. If you're fighting a TIE fighter or a kickboxer, you know, you can use your knee. Now, the thing is, you more than likely don't have to because if you're elbowing, your, your top is already right there. So you can, somebody's, somebody's throwing one of these kicks, a front round kick, boom, your top is already there. So your body doesn't even have to touch them. Just boom, you elbow them, your target is their knee. If not their knee, their quadricep. If not the quadricep, their 
instep of their calf or their shin, you're going to do some damage. If they're throwing a low kick this way and you just decide to step back, you know, that looked a little feminine, so deal with it. It's a wind chunk stand. So tuck it in, you know, then you can get back. When you tuck it in, bam, you've got their leg. If they do one of these, boom, boom, a double, boom, boom, you know, you got them. But nine times of ten, when you hit that first hit, they're going to pull back. That double's not going to happen because pain and compliance is a thing. So again, you know, my favorite is out versus in. Now, the thing with Tompas is that they are complicated if you don't get used to them really, really quickly. So you got your blocks, you know, your blocks, your windshield wiper blocks, you know, foom, foom. This is all waist twisting, but you don't really have to do that because that arm is perfect. This arm is perfect. So you can stand in a perfect fight stance and block all damn day. Now, let's say it gets by you, boom. So that's why this would come down. You, if you know your basic blocks, you know, here, here, you add the twist with the top. So here, there, or here and there, here, there, or here and there. You will find the niche that works for you. Personally, I would say you probably will never have to block this way. But if you do, boom, boom, you got a double whammy. Yeah, you because know, you can block the kick and then strike. Or you can block the kick and then come back. Or you can block the kick and go there. Now, if you notice, this and this was a lot slower than this and this. Because it's already at your opponent. Versus now I got to work harder. Which, like I said, that's kind of the same difference between karate and kung fu. Because with karate, you're working a little harder. So I'm blocking and I'm countering. With kung fu, I'm blocking and I'm striking. You know, and same thing with Kempo, I'm blocking, I'm striking. So it's kind of all relative on that kind of thing. Now again, I probably just pissed off 90% of martial artists watching this video. It's fine. What are you going to do? I'm going to Spider-Man see. Really? Then you're going to do something stupid to me? Go ahead. Knock yourself out. The problem is really simple. Everybody wants to tell people martial arts and don't want to give them the truth. I'm going to give you the truth as I see fit, which means I'm going to give you the damn truth. You're not going to like it. The truth is not kind. But you can contest it, and you can go do your own research. But I promise you, you'll be coming back to ask me, where did they go wrong? And the simple fact is that no one really goes wrong. They have to tell you what works for them because that's how they were taught. I will tell you what works for me because that's how I was taught. But I will also tell you that I feel test most of the shit that I tell you. And not just like practicing with my nephew. I've literally already gone through all that shit. Except for the weapons. I've never put weapons on anybody outside of practicing with the damn things. And in practice, people get hurt. So you don't really practice with weapons. Unless they're like styrofoam. If you find like the styrofoam weapons that you can practice with where no one can get hurt. Then that's fine. But you're not going to find styrofoam commas. You're not going to find styrofoam chobos. You may find a styrofoam bow staff. It's called a Q-tip or a pugil stick. You can practice with those. Those are safer. They have a big fucking cushion on it. But there are no practice chobos. There are no practice commas. Those practice commas that have a wooden. Those are practice commas, literally. But any weapon inside of a martial artist's hand is a weapon. However, the best weapon is that martial artist himself. And when you often find yourself without a weapon, this is when you find out if your skills are real. All right? If you don't have a weapon and you can hold your own, you were taught right. If you have a weapon and someone takes that shit from you, you either missed a class or you weren't taught properly. I have never had a weapon taught from me, but I will tell you honestly, it can happen. If you're not careful, it will happen. And you will live to regret that decision of bringing that weapon in the first place. So why bring a fucking weapon to a fight that can be taken from you at any time? One of my favorite phrases is a weapon that did you bring to a fight is yours, but it's theirs if they know what they're doing. So why set yourself up for that epic fail? Fight with your hands and feet, forearms, knees, elbows, pile of dirt. No, do what you got to do to survive. But at that same time, be legitimately aware that a really good martial artist can beat you with an empty bottle. With no problem.
as they said in Kempo, and this is a philosophy that I will carry with me to my grave. You don't have to like it, but you're going to respect it. Anytime that I can beat you with your weapon, you deserve to get your ass beat. I'm sorry if I have offended anybody. If you brought a knife to a fight and I took that knife from you, somebody failed you. Or you failed yourself. You can look at it any way you want, but I'm going to tell it like it is. If you bring a weapon to a fight and it gets taken from you and used against you, that's really your fault. Because one, you brought the weapon to a fight. You didn't know who you were going up against. So you just said, hey, fuck it. I'm going to bring this weapon to this fight and see what the fuck happens. I can tell you what's going to happen. <sighs> You're not going to have a good day. All right? And I know a lot of people who carry guns and shit. All right? I'm old school. I don't carry no damn gun. I got a knife. I don't carry it with me because I know I'll use the damn thing. If I ain't got no other choice, I know I'll use the thing. And if I have to use a weapon, the time for negotiations are over. It's just that simple. We're done talking. Somebody's got to get fucked up. I don't intend on it being me. Now, you bring that knife to the fight. Yes, that was a wedgie. You bring that knife to the fight. And I take it from you. That's your fault. Because you brought that knife to the fight. I have options now that I have your knife. I can use it on you. Probably do some jail time for stabbing you with your own fucking knife. Or I can throw that knife far enough away that you can't get it. Which is my plan. However, backtrack a step. If you've already cut me with that knife, the deal is done. I'm going to cut you with that same fucking knife. And I'm going to cut you deep and worse. Providing that you don't hit me in an artery and I bleed the fuck out before that shit happens. But also, you got to think about it. In one of these videos, I don't know which one it was, I said this before, I'll say it again. You can talk your way into a fight. You can't always talk your way out of it. So if you're one of those people who really can't fight but think you can fight, you're going to find out real hard that, you know, um, that's some shit you probably shouldn't be doing. And, you know, if you've never been in a fight a day in your life, then pick your fights carefully. No. Don't go starting fights with MMA guys. Don't go starting fights with wrestlers. Don't go starting fight with cosplayers. We're some dangerous motherfuckers. <laughs> Don't go starting fights with stuntmen. Don't go starting fights with actors that you think are just actors but are actually martial artists before they were actors. And God only knows what they were uh, before that. That being said, I'm cutting down my hair. You know, there are a lot of reasons why fights mm -hmm. happen. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten, they happen because somebody ran their goddamn mouth. Mm -hmm. And again, I say this lovingly, respectfully, and honorably. If you cannot fight, keep your mouth shut. Like I said two seconds ago, you can talk your way into a fight. This is the first time I've used this brush. Sorry about that. That was awesome. But yeah, you can talk your way into a fight. Can't always talk your way out. So for all of y'all out there and for the love of God, please don't go getting off into your shit. And one more thing before I end all of this shit. If you've watched any of my videos, and I forgot to say this, so I'm going to say it now. Do not try the shit you see me doing without proper martial arts training. And even if you had proper martial arts training, some of the shit that I do has not been taught since 1984. So you probably shouldn't try that shit just to be on the safe side unless you can find a master who has been teaching since 1984. Mm -hmm. Then, knock yourself out. But if you haven't, for the love of God, for the sake of all that is holy, do not attempt the shit that you see me doing. 
I'm not saying this shit to be an asshole. I'm looking out for you. You may not think that I am, but I'm looking out for you. For Comfort Africa number two, I'm James Williams Jr., BCMU. For Instagram, 